What is up, fellow nerds, and welcome back to the Dapper Snapper Gaming Channel, and welcome back to How Do I Want to Do This? This is our series where we take a look at all playable options available to players in Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition, and we rank them on a scale of 1 to 10, and then we build them together. Now, this week we are talking about the Storm Herald Barbarian. It's crazy to think that we're a little over halfway done with the Barbarians now, and so we've only got a little bit left to go. But it's been a fun time, and I'm really excited to bring you today's build. Of course, as always, make sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe if you haven't already. As you can see, almost 90% of the viewers of this channel are not subscribed. That's crazy. Uh, so please, go ahead and subscribe. And also, thank you for 300 subscribers. We just reached that this past weekend, and so I really, really appreciate that. Um, it really it really means a lot. We've had quite a bit of growth since we started doing some some D and D content, and um, and I'm I'm having a really good time seeing a lot of new faces in the comments. It's great. Speaking of comments, of course, let me know in the comments what you think about this build, what you would do to improve it, and what you think about the subclass in general. So as we discussed on Tuesday, the Storm Herald Barbarian barely passed our test um, and so we are building it rather than fixing it. Um, it it was kind of on the border I, I, I definitely don't think it's one of the strongest options um, it's not it's not bad though it's it's functional it's usable um, but it, like it's usable enough to, to be able to um, to be viable but it's also mm, it's not it's not the best so we're gonna see if we can't enhance it uh, today with a little bit of multi-classing so we're going to be going down another interesting road with our multi-classing. Again, still no fighter builds. It's coming, I promise. Uh, but today is not that fighter build, so we're just going to have to see where we go with it. Last thing before we jump in, uh, of course, our honorable mentions will be at the very end of the video, just like always. Um, this one was a little more clear-cut. I didn't have a ton of builds uh, prepared for this one. Did have a couple, um, but this one actually was the original mode that I was trying to go with um, and it was it was getting a little clunky and then I changed a couple of things and fixed a couple of things and um, it seems a lot more cohesive now and makes a lot more sense so I ended up going back to my original idea after I had thought that I would scrap it so anyway if you want to see the other ideas that I came up with that will be at the end of the video so let's jump in so for race we are going custom lineage from Tasha's of course if you are not allowed to do stuff like this then varying human is just fine we need several feats. Um, like I said, the subclass itself isn't that great. Um, so we do need a little bit of help, unfortunately. Um, and we're going to do that with several, several feats. Um, this will probably be the most feats I've had on a build so far. Um, and that's going to cause it to suffer a little bit because we also want to take ASIs. But we're just going to do the best we can. So starting off... Uh, at level one we're gonna go ahead and grab a feat using the um, custom lineage the reason I like custom lineage over the variant human on this build is because of the plus two to one stat um, I I really want to help this one out as much as I can and I would love to have a 20 at level one and so that is what we're gonna do so instead of taking something like polar master even though we're taking a glaive we are going to take slasher instead so slasher is a half feet from tasha's um, and among other things it gives us a plus one to strength and so we can go ahead and use that plus our plus two from our race and have a 20 from our 17 which we'll talk about in just a second so i really like the slasher feet here um, it does several things um, and honestly yeah polar master is coming i know you're thinking it um, but we're not going to be able to use like half of it just because of the features we get from our class that are actually better than polar master um but you know it is what it is so we get the plus one strength we can reduce enemy speed when we hit them with attacks which is pretty great um and when we score a crit that creature has disadvantage on all attacks until the start of our next turn so that is also fantastic um i really really like this because we are attacking recklessly most of the time and then giving disadvantage cancels out the advantage that our opponents would have on us so awesome bring for level one as far as stats go of course we're taking our modified standard array and so this is going to consist of 17 strength 15 constitution 13 wisdom 12 dex 10 charisma and 8 intelligence again all three of my barbarian builds so far have been 
with multi classes into wisdom characters, which is weird. But we need the wisdom in order to uh, pad out some of the features that we want. So, yeah, we got to take a 13 wisdom. So that does mean Dex is going to suffer a little bit, unfortunately. But we'll we'll work on it. Um, but so here's how we get that 20. We get 17 originally plus two from the custom lineage and plus one from slasher which gives us a total of 20 so we are maxed out already at level one which is amazing to see um you don't really get that on a lot of builds um unless you are doing rolled stats and you roll really luckily or or something like this and you have to take that half feet um either way it's really really nice to have for class of course we are taking barbarian because that's you know, we always take the featured class first. Um, in our later videos of optimization, we may not do that, but um, the feature today is Barbarian, so that's what we're starting with. Um, and so we're taking standard equipment, of course, as always. Um, you wanna make sure you pick up a glaive um, or another type of polearm that does slashing damage. Um, that's gonna be really, really important because we wanna make sure we're dealing slashing damage. Uh, very, very important to have. Um, because otherwise our feet is completely useless so we want to make sure we're doing that um, we also get rage rage is fantastic as always love rage um, and then of course we get an armored defense probably not going to use it because our dexterity is kind of bad um, so probably focus on the scale mail for for now um, i don't know that we're going to have an opportunity to really fix dexterity on this build unfortunately so we're kind of focusing on wisdom and constitution and strength we don't have to focus on because it's already maxed out so yeah we're gonna be kind of focusing on those two unfortunately so yeah it's it's gonna be scale mail level two of course we get danger sense and reckless attack which is amazing um, if you want a really detailed look at all of these different features make sure to check out my barbarian uh, class guide up in the iCard above that is where we go into all kinds of detail of our specific barbarian features so make sure you check that out and then after that we go to level three and that gives us our subclass and of course we're taking storm herald um, so this gives us some really really cool options that we can take as far as three different environments we're going to be focusing on the sea in this build because i talked about how much i really really liked it and it gives us a lot of different really cool things like breathing underwater a little bit later um, but for now we're going to be taking it so that we can do a little bit of damage um, and it kind of combos really really well with uh, with a feature we get a little bit later but yeah this is pretty fantastic we can just deal a little bit of damage it's not a ton of damage but it's more than polearm master um, on our on our reaction um, there is a save but we're gonna do damage either way because it's half as much on a success so that's fine and it's based on constitution so that does mean that we want to get our constitution up as fast as we possibly can and we're going to do that sort of in, in just a little bit so at level four, we get an ASI or a feat. Um, I really want to take another feat here, but I don't want to push off my ASI too late in the build. Um, and I think we can afford to wait one more slot on our feat that we need to take, um, at least one of the other feats we want to take. Um, and so we're gonna go ahead and take a plus one to constitution and a plus one to wisdom actually. Um, and so this actually gets us to a plus two wisdom modifier, which is pretty cool. So this is helping things like our perception, um, which is always a great thing. Perception is a very useful skill. Um, and it's going to give us multiple uses of certain features once we go to multi-class um, that are based on our wisdom modifiers. So this makes our wisdom modifier plus two and it makes our constitution mod modifier go up to plus three out of 16. So pretty cool. Again, I want feats here, but I really can't justify passing up an ASI here. Um, I really want to start patching that up and this also is going to help with the saving throw against our against our C feature that we're using as our bonus action. Level five is of course fast movement and extra attack, both fantastic features, which we have discussed in length. Um, and then level six. This is very similar to our beast build where uh, it depends on your situation um, as to whether or not you should go ahead and multi-class or whether you should go ahead and stick with barbarian one more level. It completely depends on the environment that you're going into. So if you're going into a volcano based type of thing, maybe it'd be okay to switch over to fire for a little bit and wait on the multi-class. Um, the feature that we're going for 
within the uh, multi-class is completely dependent on the C being active. So, you know, we're going to have to go back to that. But if you're in the cold and you want to temporarily take the Tundra, that's totally fine. Um, but we're going to typically stick to C. And so unless you really need to breathe underwater, I would go ahead and um, go ahead and multi-class. And then if you get into a situation where you need to do that, you can just come back to Barbarian for a level and then jump back to our multi-class. Um, but so, we're taking Cleric. And this isn't the first time we've done a Cleric and Barbarian mix. Um, and typically they're not really that optimal. Again, we're not here for optimized builds. It's here just for fun. Um, and so we're taking Tempest Domain, which is completely in line with the Storm flavor. It makes a whole lot of sense. It seems like super easy way to just transition over to that which is absolutely fantastic um, this is going to be a bit of a deep dip um, it's a little a little bit more than a dip in my opinion um, but i think it's useful and it's going to be really really handy for helping us deal a lot of damage um, and with the pole arm and with a couple other things that we're going to take um, it's going to really start to stack up it just takes a long time for us to get this build set up um, i really try to have my builds set up by level like six at the most this one's going to be much later so this is going to be better for a higher level type of campaign um just because it's going to take a long time to get all the levels in that we need so anyway we're going cleric tempest domain cleric so this gives us heavy armor and martial weapons we can't use heavy armor and we already are proficient with martial weapons so we kind of struck out with that one it also, though, gives us a feature which is really, really neat that allows us to deal a little bit of damage. It's called Wrath of the Storm, and so we can actually deal 2d8 damage on a reaction now. Instead of just our bonus action dealing damage, we also have our reaction, which is pretty cool. Um, so that's pretty nice, right? 2d8 is not too bad and that is thunder or lightning damage whichever one we choose and so this is going to also combo with something we get a little bit later um and the whole thing will come together here in just a little bit i promise but it does it does take just a while level seven cleric two we get our channel divinity which is pretty great it allows us to maximize thunder or lightning damage instead of rolling which is pretty handy to be honest uh, that's really nice, especially comboed with our features that we're getting from our bonus action attack. It applies to those. It'll also apply to our reaction attack. Um, this can really help us to deal out some good, reliable damage. Um, it'd be great to eventually get a hold of a polearm that also does slashing damage that does some, uh, some thunder or lightning damage in there. That, that'd be pretty great you know talk to your DM see if see if that's something that uh, that you can get later on as a magic item but yeah that's pretty cool speaking of these different types of damage we haven't talked about spells yet and again we cannot cast spells or concentrate on spells while we're raging so we're gonna try to focus on outside of combat spells um, there's a decent list clerics don't really have a big list of cantrips um, ones that i would suggest are mending thaumaturgy and light but again if you want to take a a damaging one that's fine but remember your spell saving throw dc is going to be pretty low and your bonus to hit is going to be pretty low um we do have a plus two to our wisdom which is you know better than plus one which is where it, most of the time it ends up um but just remember it is pretty low and um creatures may succeed on it more often than not um as far as first level spells Cure Wounds is not bad for just an emergency if you need to heal yourself or an ally. Um, not too bad. Detect Magic as well as Detect Evil and Good and Detect Poison and Disease are always really nice um, for outside of combat type of stuff. And then Sanctuary is actually a really good pick as well in my opinion. So any of those, really good picks. Level 8, Cleric 3. No features but second level spells which is pretty useful. Um, we get Aid here and Aid I think is the best one that you can pick up. Um, aid is a fantastic spell that you can use way before combat because it lasts a long time um, and it adds HP to, to people's max HP, which is great. So this allows people to just be able to sponge more damage and be able to 
when receiving healing, heal up higher than what your normal max HP would be. So that's absolutely wonderful. Um, Lesser Restoration, Prayer of Healing, and Zone of Truth are all really good picks as well. So definitely consider those. Level 9, Cleric 4, another ASI or a feat, as well as another Cleric Cantrip. Um, we're now taking Polar Master. Um, Polar Master is, of course, one of the better feats that's out there. But we can't even use part of it just because we're already using our uh, bonus action to use our C type of stuff. But, you know, if you run into something that's for some reason immune to your damage from your bonus action attack, then great. You have a D4 to smack them with the butt end of your of your halberd um, or your glaive. Um, so it's tough because we don't get the full use out of it. But we're gonna make it really useful. We're gonna take advantage of the rest of it in two levels. Level 10, Cleric 5. We get a Destroy Undead, and then Cleric 6. This is where we stop with Cleric, but it's uh, it's got something really, really cool that I really wanted to grab. We've got another use of Channel Divinity, which is great, but we also get another subclass feature. Um, and this is the whole reason why we took the dip, was the sixth level Cleric uh, feature. It's called Thunderous Strike, and it allows us to push an enemy 10 feet away when we hit them with thunder or lightning damage. So this obviously combos with both our C ability from level 3, as well as our Cleric 1 ability being able to do damage on a reaction. Um, the reaction can only happen twice per day, but the bonus action is every bonus action. And so this is kind of where things start to get a little dangerous, right? So we can, in theory now, go with Polar Master here and hit them with an attack, say they're five feet away from us, push them 10 feet away. Cool. They're now just outside of our range with our, with our glaive. They come running back at us. Polar Master activates because we get to attack when people enter our range. So then we get an extra attack. Then we can just rinse and repeat and just keep pushing them away and gain an extra attack every time they re-enter. So this is getting a little crazy now. So yeah, we, we can do a lot of really cool things now. Um, we're gonna be spamming our bonus action attack from the sea like crazy because then that can push people and then we can just kind of be bullies all over the place and just be keeping people off of us and if they want to get back in then they're going to have to take some damage in order to do so so that is wonderful level 12 we're back to barbarian 6 and we now get the ability to breathe underwater we get a swim speed and we get resistance to lightning damage which are all pretty useful lightning damage is going to be a little more situational but the other two great if you're if you're near water then that's Wonderful. Um, level seven, we get Feral Instincts, and so this gives us advantage on initiative, which is wonderful because we are wanting to go ahead and get into position as quickly as we possibly can, and we've gotta get up in people's faces. So that is a wonderful thing to have. Level 14, we're a Barbarian eight, so we get another ability score improvement or a feat. This one was a little tougher because, I want really bad to take something like Sentinel um, just to help with you get to attack when they enter and leave your your range um, but I also really want to take something else because I want us to be dealing a good amount of damage as much as we can at least with this kind of a build and we're going great weapon master so yeah we have the polar master great weapon master uh, combo going on with this build. I thought it was appropriate. I thought it worked out well So we can take a minus five to hit and then gain a plus ten to damage and so this is Gonna come up a lot if we're making a lot of attacks again if we're pushing people away Forcing them to come back to us You apply it on that attack too, and so it's going to be super relevant all the time so I think this is a wonderful bring. I think it's gonna really help us with our damage. Um, at the very least, you know, you have two attacks, so one and two, that's 20 damage, assuming both, both hit. We push, and then they come back to attack. As our reaction, we get another one. So that's 30 free damage by taking a minus five to hit, which 
our plus to hits pretty good so i mean it's it's not going to be that big of a deal so i i think it's going to be great i think that that's going to really add on to our numbers as far as damage Level 15, Barbarian 9, that gives us Brutal Critical, which combos amazing with all of our attacks we're making, as well as the fact that we're making them all with advantage because of Reckless Attack. Then we look at level 16, Barbarian 10. We get one of the most lackluster features that we could possibly get for, for this build anyway. Um, it's that we can share resistance to lightning damage around us within 10 feet. If you're fighting something that's against that does lightning damage great you're you're doing okay as long as everybody's basically on top of you otherwise this isn't gonna come up um so it's it's gonna be somewhat rare that this is useful at least compared to your other features so it, it's tough that a late that a feature that comes online this late is is not gonna be super useful but it is what it is Level 17 brings us to Barbarian 11, which gives us Relentless Rage, which is one of our best features. Uh, basically just makes it where we can't die, because that's amazing, we just kind of pop back up anyway. Um, and this is based on our Constitution, which is still sitting at 16, so I want to get the most use out of this feature as I possibly can. So next level, we're going to get an ASI or Feat. We're going to forego the extra feat that I wanted, unfortunately, but I think that we need to improve our constitution more, and so we're going to bump that to an 18, which is pretty good. I, I think that that's wonderful. Um, our dex is still quite low, so you know it does hurt our armor class, but if we can just knock people out with all the free damage we're doing quicker than they can knock us down, plus we still have, a, we still have our resistance to, you know, to weapon damage, which is fantastic, so... You know, we, we still have some survivability. Our constitution hasn't been terrible this whole time. Um, and so now for these last few levels, we're gaining even more HP. We're gonna be uh, improving our saving throw against our, our level three feature as well. So um, constitution is, is great all around. It, it does a lot for us in this build. Level 19, which is Barbarian 13, gives us Brutal Critical except now it's two die instead of just one. So all those crits we're dealing, yep, you can just double that damage that's being added on there, which is amazing. And then finally, level 20, we're gonna be using our capstone ability for our subclass as our capstone for the whole thing. This now allows us to try to knock people prone with a strength saving throw um, when we hit them with an attack, which is pretty cool. Um, it doesn't say we can't knock them prone and push them which could create a bit of an issue for them you know we we push them away they have to get back to us their speed is lowered um i mean you know if you're at level 20 i don't think that it's going to be you know you probably aren't going to be facing a lot of things that are small unless it's a really high level caster um but it could come up you know you never know you never know um but yeah that is our build that's level 20. So let me know what you think down in the comments below. Uh, I really like this build. Honestly, I think that the Tempest Domain Cleric is going to add a lot to this subclass. Um, I think it adds some things that it really, really needs, um, especially being able to maximize our damage from the uh, Thunder and Lightning is wonderful. That's gonna really help our damage. Um, it's as if we you know, kind of took the great weapon fighting fighting style as far as like knocking out the low rolls and not having to worry about those um, so that is fantastic I, I love that it also combos with our bonus action attack that we get from level three so that's cool too like it, it works really well together as a cohesive kit um, and of course the combination of polar master and great weapon master I, I couldn't pass it up on this build it was just it was just too useful so yeah anyway our honorable mentions a fighter of course is going to be appearing in the honorable mentions um i i think that it was it was bound to happen um i had a battle master fighter with the pushing attack um and that basically did the same thing as far as as being able to push them away plus getting other uh, battle master features However, I thought that the Cleric provides a lot of versatility as far as in the magic that we can get, um, as well as the Channel Divinity, being able to maximize our damage. I think we're gonna get more for our buck 
um, out of even though it is six levels rather than three um, I felt like it was more worth taking those three extra levels rather than you know maybe keeping three levels in in fighter um, or possibly taking an additional ASI or feet than it would have been to to go the other way so I, I think that it was a little more useful to do that um, the other option was the storm sorcerer but even though it fits the theme it was really hard to try to make it work um, the sorcerer really doesn't work well with the barbarian uh, like really at all just because they're so focused on spells and there's not really a whole lot else that they want to do it's all based on magic stuff and so I couldn't find a functional way to do that if you can find a functional way let me know down below but I, I couldn't find a really a way that actually like would work okay to where you wouldn't be frustrated with the entire character so that is all I've got for you today of course make sure to leave a like if you haven't already and subscribe next week we are doing one of the most well-known subclasses not only to the barbarian but also just in dungeons and dragons in general and that is the totem warrior so if you're excited for me to talk about that and give you my thoughts go ahead and subscribe and click the bell so you don't miss any of my future uploads we're gonna have a really good time with that one i hope you guys are looking forward to it until then have a great week stay safe out there we'll see you later Bye bye